NFL Week 5. Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. Andy, Jim, and Corbin here. We're going to break down everything from a props and parlay standpoint. We're going to talk a little in the trenches, go over some offensive and defensive lines uh, issues. We're going to go over our best bets at the end of the show. Corbin's going to give us uh, some alternate lines and some same-game parlays. Let's get right into it. While you guys are watching, if you could, hit the like button. Always helps the algorithm out. And um, let's see, what can we do for our uh, word of the day? Print. Word of the day is print. Leave a comment. If you don't have a hot take on your best bet, just type the word print in the comment section. Corbin loves the word of the day. It's the most ridiculous algorithm boosting thing, but it helps us out a ton, and we love you guys for it. All right, let's go over weather. Only a couple games of weather. Uh, Corbin, <laughs> to the surprise of nobody, <laughs> there's a chance of rain in the European game. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise. It just it rains here constantly. So Yeah, uh, Jets and Vikings, so... I think you could just pencil in drizzle. Yeah, <laughs> for that's all pretty of, accurate. For Don't need a weatherman to tell you that. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Colts at the Jaguars. It does look like there's going to be some rain uh, for the for the Colts and Jaguars. So expect that to be just a little bit wet. Um, and then Cowboys and Steelers. Um, it's starting to become fall, and it's Pittsburgh. So, of course, it's not going to be perfect weather. So mm-hmm. 70% chance. So uh, keep your eye out on those. Of course, we're recording this on Saturday. So... Weather, always subject to change. We'll go over a little bit of the injury report here. There's just so many. It's yeah. like, <laughs> it's, it's just so many to go over. So we'll go over some um, uh, some big ones. Uh, uh, Jim, look, Mosley's not going to play. Uh, no. so, so that's going to help out the, the Vikings offense. I, real quick, what do you expect from the Jets defense? Is this the Jets defense from the beginning of the season, or do we need to reel in expectations? We'll we'll go into it a little deeper when we get to the the, okay. the in the trenches, but they have some issues on that okay. defense. All right, uh, Bears and the Panthers. Um, nothing too notable for this one. Ravens and Bengals. Just the Bengals defense, very very banged up. Uh, we should, we're going to expect a pretty good day from the Ravens offense. Khalil Shakir is out for the Bills. That is going to hurt that passing game. And then Mixon's going to be out. We'll talk about Cam Akers a little bit. For the Colts, uh, Corbin, you were asking who I who we have at quarterback. I think it's going to be Flacco. That's my best guess. I would love that. Yeah, I, listen, I, if you're rooting for Colts wins, yeah, I think you would like that too. Um, Richardson with a bad hip, uh, not not great. So Jaguars, uh, Evan Ingram, looks like he's going to play with the hamstring. Um uh, I mean, my God, the Dolphins and the Patriots. I, <laughs> just pass. Just, just defenses just carry, just are carry just brutal, man. It's it, the question is, can the offenses even take advantage of no. it? So um, we don't even know who's going to play in that game. I, it, really it's an absolute train wreck. Really don't. Uh, the Commanders. I think the big one from a props betting standpoint is keep your eye on Brian Robinson. McNiggles is uh, out there in fantasy leagues. If you're in a deeper league like uh, one of my leagues, I went and grabbed him. I may end up starting him, even though Eckler looks like he's going to play. Uh, for the Raiders, uh, Devontae Adams and his uh, trade issue. I mean, hamstring is out. Uh, Samir, <laughs> Samir White is out. That's probably not that big of a uh, b- big of a loss there. So, uh, Cardinals and 49ers. You know, the 49ers, like Kittle's playing, Debo's playing. I'm just not sure they're 100%. So oh, I, I'm not sure it's like a, you know, I, I'm starting to want Jennings in a, in a fantasy league. I, I still am. Um, Love it. Uh, Cardinals got a couple issues, but uh, nothing for uh, for props. Uh, Packers, Corbin, do you know what's going on with uh, Romeo Dobbs here? I actually do not. I saw that pop up earlier. I, I do not know. He, I, he's not going to play, I don't think, from okay. what I've read. Uh, nor is Watson by the sounds of it. But, yeah, not yeah, sure well, why on Dobbs. Watson looks like he's probably going to miss a little bit of time. So Dontavian Wicks is probably going to be a really good one. Uh, Malik Neighbors, huge loss for the Giants. And now Devin Singletary is out. I'm not sure Singletary is that big of a, of a deal. But the Seahawks, man, their defense, God, when they're healthy, they're one of the best. They're just not healthy. So you know. That Boye Mafe right there, that's the one to watch. Yeah. He yeah. makes that defense go. Yeah, so keep your eye on that one. I, like it's a it's a really good week for the Giants to take advantage of a banged up Seahawks defense, but can they do it without <laughs> neighbors and Singletary? Eh, I don't know. Uh, Cowboys, boy, their passing game wasn't very good going in there. Now they don't have Brandon Cooks, and their defense is pretty banged up. Uh, we'll we'll talk about some of the props. I I, I think I'm pretty high on some of the Steelers uh, props here. So, 
All right, that is going to do it for the injury report. All right, let's get into uh, going over some of these uh, passing props. Man, uh, what a swing and a miss I had thinking Kirk Cousins was going to go under one and a half touchdown passes on Monday night. That game ended up being a complete shootout. Let's go to some of these passing props. Corbin, I'll go to you. You like any passing props uh, for this London uh, or for this uh, European I've game? Got, yeah, I've got I've got Rogers over 32 and a half pass attempts circled. The Jets can't run the ball, as we evidently saw last week with Hall, which play just <laughs> fell on its ass very quickly. Um, they they have so many they have so many struggles on offense, not just running the ball, but like the the missed opportunities in the passing game that leads to some of these situations where he has to pass in even more situations. I think he's going to take the game into his own hands and just say, you know what? I, I, I'm the best player on this team. I'm going to try and carry our offense here. He had uh, 42 attempts and 35 attempts the last two weeks. The Vikings can cut, can put up points quite easily. I don't see a world where the Jets are like ahead and just running out the time. So, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Rogers over 32 and a half pass attempts. Uh, Jim, you like any of these passing props? Um, I mean, you could go. Not really. Uh, what's the line on Sam Darnold's uh, touchdowns? Is uh, he so one and a half? Yeah, it's it's one and a half here. Uh, you're getting minus one thirty five on the under, plus one hundred five. Uh, with mostly under. out, I think there's value on the one and a half over um, because Aaron Jones is going to be a receiving threat. And with Mosley out, they really only have one good linebacker on that defense. That's an all pro in, in uh, Quincy Williams. So with Mosley out, it depends what you want to do. If you want to have Williams go with him, Aaron Jones, then look for the tight ends. If it's flip flopped, Aaron Jones could have a real big day receiving. And I can most certainly see him sneaking in one touchdown. Then you just need one to, I mean, Hey, you're throwing it, you know, the best receiver in the league. I could get one more from him. So I wouldn't be shocked to see the Jets give up too. I was looking a little bit at Sam Darnold under 218 and a half. That pass defense, like in the secondary, is really good. Um, they've only they're not allowing this, and Darnold has actually gone under in two out of the four games um, this year. I'm not sure how the script is. Maybe a little bit of bad weather. Maybe they run it a little bit more. Um, my opinion is you can attack the Jets a little bit better on the ground. Not going to get to the window on it, but those are leans. Uh, Colts and Jags. Corbin, you and I agree. Man, we'd love to see Flacco play for them. I've literally got in my notes, Flacco props, please! <laughs> Exclamation mark. I, I will take full advantage of the poor Jags defense if I can. I actually, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I kind of like Trevor Lawrence to go over this week. I don't know how. I, I probably won't play it, but what I found... I, I was trying to find an angle because the, the Colts re are really bad versus the pass. I mean, they made Caleb Williams look good. Maybe maybe it's the passing touchdowns at over one and a half at plus 100. He got two last week. It's kind of one of those where the spot seems good and it could easily be a way to boost his confidence and try and reignite the Jags. But do I trust him? Oh, probably not. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I I, I was excited to, to fade to fade the Colts defense last couple years with Trevor Lawrence. I think we cashed a couple of them, but he just never obliterates teams like he should. You're like, oh, he's set yeah. up for a huge game. Then he has like 220 yards, a touchdown. And a You're like, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't forget uh, the five-yard rush fumble <laughs> that he's always good for. It's always slide. It's, Have you gotten to learn to slide yet? <laughs> uh, uh, Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. Uh, you could you could tempt me with Joe Burrow over two fifty and a half, most, mostly because I don't think that the 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 Bagels are going to have much much success running. The Ravens rank very high for rush defense, not so much in the past. You can move the ball on them, Jim. You got any quarterback um, plays in this one? I worry about Joe Flacco in this game. I think Joe he's Burrow. Take, <laughs> or Joe Flacco? Burrow. Yeah, Flacco. Seems everyone's got Flacco on their mind. <laughs> um, I know we can't help think about little Joe Flacco. Uh, I think Burrow's in trouble. Uh -oh. I think he's in trouble. I think he's in trouble physically. That offensive line is horrible still. They've been trying to fix it for three years, and it still stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, but it does. Um, and but this could be a pass rush field day for Baltimore right now. They got Justin Madden Bouquet in the center. Away is good. Kyle Van Noy has five sacks in, I think, three games. He's just a career resurgence. That O-line is bad. 
they're good. If if Baltimore starts running up the score on them and they drop back to pass and Baltimore knows it every play, I'm worried about Joe making it through this game. I don't know if he'll be there in the fourth. And honestly, if I'm the coach, I'm pulling him if it looks like it because there's no reason to get him any more injured than he already is. Uh, Corbin, you like any of these quarterbacks? No. <laughs> All right. We'll move on to the – Better answer, Corbin. Browns at the <laughs> Commanders. Deshaun, right. Deshaun, over one and a half of plus – Oh, don't do it to yourself, Andy. Nope. Just, just, don't, just don't do it to yourself. I can't bet on Deshaun Watson, but, man, I really want to fade this uh, Commanders secondary. So, um, I don't you're know. Ma- you almost hope he goes under just so you get a better price on the week, week after. I don't know who it is the week after, but – Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I, in the end, no, I'm staying away. I think this could be a little bit of a letdown week for the commanders. So I'm not, I'm not going all in on Jane Daniels and Watson. I'm, I'm, I'm showing patience. So, uh, I'll go next if you want. Next, next week it. is the Ravens, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. We'll take Lamar Jackson. Um, how is Caleb Williams at 213 and a half? I've, so I've, I've gone through all his passing props this week, and I can't understand why any of them are so high, basically. I'm still not convinced he's any good. He doesn't look accurate, and he's not throwing it deep. So if, well, like... if you're going to take all that into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> so, so through four games, he has 157, 174, 93, and the one game where he torched your Colts that can't defend anything yeah. for 363. <laughs> and you're telling me the total is at 214 now? Like, I love it, but then I'm expecting the Panthers are better versus the pass than the run, and I'm expecting the Bears to do a lot of running the ball here. Like, I look at all the totals, I'm like, I love under one and a half passing touchdowns as well. He has three throughout the whole year, and two of them came against your Colts. His longest is under 34 and a half. Again, he's had 27, 27, 13, and the 47 against the Colts. It's like <laughs> I literally I love all I love all three of those plays against Caleb this week, and I don't quite understand why the totals are where they are. So, I I think I, I like your thirty four and a half under longest completion. That's a really good one. That's a good one. I I think that's your best one. That's an untapped market. Uh, I bet the the books are kind of uh, overlooking that one. So, um, yeah, you know I, the the Bears are a pretty good defense. I'm I. Dalton, I think we lost the value on him. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe plus one sixty-five over one half touchdowns. You know, if, if if they get behind, they need to throw a little bit. Um, what's just... the what's the pass uh, completions for, for Andy for for Mister Dalton for Mister Dalton? Cap uh, check down. <laughs> uh, twenty and a half. That's pretty low. I like the twenty and a half. I I looked at it at twenty one and a half last week, and I believe he came in at twenty six, mm-hmm. and he sailed over that mark in his first That's a start. Good one. I That's like a, I do like the completions because I think the Bears are going to do a good job stopping the run. Chuba got a lot of work last week. Yes, he did. I wonder. Uh, it's not really something he's used to. I wonder if there's a bit of fall off, and we have to see Andy go to the short passing game. Um, that's, that, that's interesting. Uh, the bears, they're not amazing. Again, they have four and a half yards per carry. So not amazing. They're middle of the road. Um, but you're right. Dalton, it's tough to see Dalton kind of opening it up against the bears at 20 and a half. Eh, that, that seems speaks low to, to me. me. Speaks to me. Bills and the Texans. Corbin, you love CJ Stroud. Uh, do you like any props with him this week? I actually don't. I think I, I'm struggling. It's one of those I'm struggling with the game script in this game. I don't quite know how it's going to go. I think maybe passing touchdowns again for him, but I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to lay off this game. I'm laying off a little bit uh, as well. I, 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 like who's Josh Allen throwing to these days now? Like it just feels like such a depleted. Kincaid, Knox. I guess they're the only ones that spring to mind. Yeah, I don't Even know. Even Knox is only getting one or two targets a game. Yeah. Coleman? I I I I think if you're looking at Allen props, maybe it's rushing. Um, but we'll get to we'll get to the rushing props there. Uh, Dolphins and Patriots. My goodness, Jacoby Brissett, <laughs> Tyler Huntley. Holy Somebody's got to throw for a touchdown oh. in this game, no? <laughs> I mean, I was actually looking at playing them both to throw for a touchdown. Like these defenses are just they're so banged up. Mm-hmm. That being said, I can't I can't put my hard earned money on Jacoby Brissett and Tyler Huntley. I just I just can't. Dude. Do you expect an uptick in the trust for Tyler Hunt- Huntley after this no. week? You don't think that no. McDaniel finally just says, 
he's still an NFL quarterback. Maybe I should let him throw the ball. Well, it just feels like they're running the exact same offense with a quarterback with completely different skill set than two. Exactly. So I, I, I don't know what to expect. Um, I don't see him adjusting. I okay. think they're just going to carry on just doing the same thing and failing. Ugly, ugly game. The over-under for this game is 36. And to be honest, I how do you get seven touchdowns? Or how do you get uh, – I'm sorry, five touchdowns and a field goal out of, out of these two offenses? So. <sighs> I don't know. Um, Cardinals at 49ers. Man, that Brock Purdy over one and a half touchdown passes is just like a glowing glow. Mm-hmm. Bet me. Bet <laughs> me. We're playing the Cardinals. Bet me. Uh, it's minus 150. I will tell you, Brock Purdy to throw just one touchdown would be a great parlay piece. You could throw it with like CJ Stroud, uh, Geno Smith, a couple of these other guys. Um, if there's one play that I'm looking at in this game for quarterbacks, it's Purdy over one and a half. Corbin? I, I'm going to pass on this game again. Okay. I have something in the next game, but not this one. Jim, you like any of these quarterbacks? Oh, I'm lockstep with you on the Brock Purdy. Yeah. That's yeah. the magic number with Brock Purdy is one and a half. He doesn't throw three. <laughs> throws two. <laughs> <He> throws <laughs> two. <laughs> All right, Raiders and Broncos. Corbin. Yes, I like Minshew under 188 and a half passing. Again, <laughs> what who, a is low number. <laughs> who is he throwing to? The Broncos are third best versus the pass. No Devontae Adams. He got just 130 last week and 214 the week before against the Panthers. He's thrown to Bowers and Myers. And if they're smart, they will double team Myers and leave just Bowers and and who? Sertan. I mean, the, I, I, it's interesting what the Broncos are going to do. I'm not sure if you'd put Sertan on. Do you put Sertan on Jacoby Myers to take him out at double Bowers? Or do you put Sertan on, on Bowers? I think you watch the, you have this game ready to rock and you watch the first possession and decide from there and attack it live. I know it's it, we you know we're talking pre-flop reads but I don't uh, care who they double. You, I don't care who know. gets 188 and a half. I don't I don't I don't care which one of they which one of them they go to. Honestly, Corbin, you, you're 100% right about this one. This is like 188 and a half. That is yeah. just that just feels like a mountain too high. Too high and I, you know, it's a great point too with that Corbin is if it's going bad for Minshew, aren't we teetering on the O'Connell experience? Ooh. We're, we're teetering on O'Connell coming in, aren't we? At this point, like we could very well not see Minshew the second half. That's a. I like that play, Corbin. Uh, that's a sneaky one. I hadn't even looked at that one. All right, Giants and the Seahawks. I mean, <laughs> you could take a look at Daniel Jones under 183 and a half. Who's that guy throwing to? Uh, yeah. You've got uh, Daniel Malik Bellinger. Ma- <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Jim, you like either of these quarterbacks? No. Okay. <laughs> Definitely All right. not. All right. We'll move on to Packers and Rams. Uh, Jordan Love. Corbin, you like uh, Jordan Love this week, or do you think this is a running? This is a Rams defense that is so beat up on like both sides of the ball. It's um, one of those. I I think I we'll mention it. I have a Packers related bet coming up later, but I I expect the Packers to have success whatever they try to do. I you've just gone to it, but the over one and a half for Jordan Love is where I was thinking. It's kind of hard to know who we're going to go to because I was doing the receivers, and I've got we'll get to it when we get there. But I literally have like Kraft and um wicks and reed and i like all of them but their totals are kind of right it's kind of hard to pick which one of those three is gonna yeah okay so i i think maybe the but then again jacobs could just run it in a couple of times and then he doesn't need to pass it as many times it's kind of one of those it's an it's an inviting kind of prop but i think the numbers are kind of in the right place kind of thing I'm with you. Uh, I like I, I did a preview video and uh, I like the Packers over 25 and a half or 26 and a half. Yeah. Whatever, like, team total. Both games like that the love has too. started. They've mm-hmm. scored 29 points and this Rams team isn't stopping anybody. Cowboys in the Steelers. Uh, that Justin Fields over 186 and a half is seems to be very, very inviting. I'm not sure how Dallas is going to put pressure. Um, on there, Jalen Warren is still out. So I'm not, you know, Najee Harris is going to have a, you know, a lot of carries, but I just feel like Fields is going to have all day to throw. Uh, Jim, what do you think? Do you like Dak and maybe, I don't know. Dak. I, no, I don't like Dak. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Say how you feel, Jim. Come on. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll tell you what I do like is Dak to throw an interception. Oh, uh, that's where I was going with this game. 
Ooh. I, I, I expect the Steelers defense to make Dallas's life a living hell. I feel uh, like sometimes we, we, we don't pay enough attention to the interception market. Like, how many no, interceptions no. do you see a week? And, like, we, we rarely touch on it. Well, like, it doesn't take a lot to throw an interception nowadays. You get them in such garbage situations, too. You exactly. know, there's five seconds left. You're on the 40. They throw a Hail Mary. You get the interception. So, exactly. I mean, essentially, if you expect the team to be down, then that interception is going to be on the table. It, it just has to be. Um, look, Dak's turnover prone. This is in grass. We're looking at possibly bad weather. Uh, that Steelers defense is pissed because J.J. Watt or uh, T.J. Watt got absolutely mugged last week, and nobody is throwing the flags. They are aggravated. They are mad about it. They've been talking about it. I think they're ready to make a statement against Dallas in wet grass in Pittsburgh. That is not Dallas's winning recipe. So I like Dak for maybe two turnovers in this game, a fumble and interception. Before we move on, Andy, can we quickly uh, – what's like Huntley to throw an interception? Because si- similar to what Jim was saying, if if we have any kind of suspicion that they're going to start opening up and throwing the ball, I think the Patriots could easily get an interception versus him. Mm, it's only minus 115 on Huntley. If they have the attempts, that's, that's the big question if they're going to let him throw. Again, I feel like it's one of those, Jim, you mentioned about watching live. If if we see if you tune in to the first play and they suddenly start letting him throw the ball, yeah. I feel like that's a read that you could make and try and take a live on to have one interception. Well, so as the time play. clicks off, if you watch the interception market live, the yeah. number constantly gets better. Constantly because it's all about time left in the game and possessions. So you can grab it at half time, maybe at a exactly. better number. Yeah. Exactly. Let's move to rushing yards. Jim, what do you make of the Jets and Vikings? Uh, Any rushing props you like in this one? Well, with that C.J. Mosley news being out, I like Aaron Jones. I I think this game is going to get kind of ugly for my Jets. I really, really do. Hmm. 64 is a little bit high. Uh, I'm not going to look at Brees Hall's rushing just because I think they're going to use him in the passing game. I mean, the coaching staff took so much flack about running Brees Hall into the line three times and not giving the six foot, what is he? Six foot three bowling ball, 240 pound bowling ball that carries at the goal line. So I can't take Brees Hall in this situation that Braylon Allen number at 30 and a half. If this game does get ugly, Brees Hall can go sit on the sidelines. Braylon Hall is going to get Braylon Allen is going to get all of the carries in the fourth quarter, if they're down by three scores and they send Rogers out and we get the Tyrod Taylor, uh, Braylon Allen uh, experience for the fourth quarter. So <laughs> I would be looking at that 30 and a half. Uh, we've seen him get this on three or four carries this season. So th- that's the only place I would be looking. The 64 two- and a half on Jones, I think is a little high. Yeah. I, I have a, I have two plays in that game. If, uh, if I'm okay to jump in, of um, course. Similar to Aaron Jones, I was like, I like Aaron Jones. I don't like the number considering we had it at 55 and a half last week. So I was like, how am I going to play it? And I found Aaron Jones rushing yards versus Hall's rushing yards. It's minus 175 for him to have more rushing yards than Hall. But Jones has had 83, 102, 32 versus the 49ers and 94. Hall has four. 54, 62, <laughs> and 54. <laughs> and I'm expecting Allen to just get more and more carries here. Minus 175. I, I love I love that play, quite honestly. I love the vigor in Corbin's voice when he talks about my Jets. <laughs> he had four. He's so bad that we have Aaron. He's four. Uh, yeah. Uh, four. And then quickly, whilst we're still on this game, Rogers over three and a half rushing. He's ha- he 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 looks he's looked so much younger this last couple of weeks. Twenty six, eighteen the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. The Vikings have been uh, good against the rush, but Rogers is using his legs more and more. I think, particularly in these kind of overseas games, I think there's going to be a few more broken plays, and it only takes one or two runs for him to get over this total, even with potential kneel downs if needs be. So yeah, but I really love that Aaron Jones versus Hall. I think that might be one of my favorite plays on the board. So. Well, if you're listening to Jim, there will be no kneel downs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Jets have no chance if we listen to Jim. No. When uh, when we're going through this these rushing markets here, Andy, if it, I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, the rushing and receiving. Sure. This is a market that I don't think has been talked about enough this season so far. So if, if just, for instance, let's go to the Jets game, rushing and receiving. 
Because I would be very interested in Aaron Jones, his rushing and receiving. But the Jets cornerbacks, at some point, 94, like if if we think that they're going to win and they're going to make this ugly, do you see a 30-yard screen pass from Aaron Jones? I think that's 100% on the table with the weaknesses at linebacker. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. that Brees Hall's is 82 and a half. That's I mean, they're, so high. They're they're telling you that they expect him uh, to catch more. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, let's go to the Colts and the Jaguars, which literally just went off the board. Uh, Trey, <laughs> Trey Sermon, as we're recording it, uh, Trey Sermon is going to be getting the start for Jonathan Taylor. I'm not really sure I like uh, I would do anything with him. I think people are going to be pretty excited to add him. Just because, oh, it's a new face, and Taylor's always going to get all the work. Jaguars, 3.9 yards per carry. They've been good against the run. And, Corbin, like we said, if we're, if we're starting Flacco, uh, you're love you looking at this these wide receivers to really, really have big days. So, yeah. Um, so those are off the board, uh, but I don't have any opinion on the Jaguars. I think they're they're pretty tough to figure out. I'm not sure what how healthy ETN is, so... Uh, Ravens and the Bengals. Corbin, we're going to talk about this game in the best bet. So, Jim, I will go to you. You like any of these rushing props? I'd be looking at the Justice Hill 14 and a half. I know he doesn't get a lot of touches in the run game, but that number is absolutely stupid low. And what we're seeing is Derrick Henry is punishing defenses, and then Justice Hill gets to come in fresh, and he's the speed back. So you can get this in one play, one rush for 20 yards. Instead of chasing Henry's number, which is always crazy, and Lamar Jackson, I really like pivoting and taking these backup, you know, uh, contribution players on a lot of these teams instead of the big names this season. Uh, Browns and the Commanders, um, Watson, Daniels, Ford, Corbin, I got nothing for rushing props. No, no. Uh, again, everyone looks at Daniels and everyone goes, oh, like he's been so great. But these numbers are exactly in the right place for me. Yep. There's there's, there's no value in any of them. Oh, keyword value. Uh, and, and, and anytime we give out one of our words that we ha- absolutely hate in the betting industry, value is one of them. Uh, sharp, we love value. Sharp is, <laughs> is one of them. Um yeah, you know, craziest stat of the season so far. Uh, the Commanders have 23 scoring drives and 19 incompletions. That's amazing. The freaking Commanders. Uh, Panthers and the Bears. Just so many, so many guys. It feels like are going to get carries for the Bears. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, I played Swift two weeks ago <laughs> when he <laughs> did nothing, and then they come back and give him all the carries. I have absolutely no feel for this uh, Bears team, and to be honest, I. I think the coaching staff doesn't have a very good feel for them. So nothing in this one, Jim, you like any rushing props? No, no, I won't be looking at rushing. I I like Hubbard over 62 and a half. The bears pass defense is ranked eighth. They're rushed 19th. So that already tells me, I feel like the Panthers might run a bit more here. Hubbard's had 104, 114, 64, the last three weeks. And I just feel like they're at their best when they have him running the ball as well. I do have a slight concern for what Jim said earlier about his over usage and that he might start to tire. I think we have at least a couple more weeks and I feel like this is a decent total to try and grab in that. Yeah. I, I, I don't worry about his usage because Jonathan Brooks is slowly making his way back. I, the, 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 uh, like if you're Hubbard, don't you want to audition? Exactly. Like, That's I, why I think we. I think we have. Oh, at least sure he's not worried. Three, four weeks. To that, <laughs> I, 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 I think the Panthers are in the same boat too. Once Brooks gets that, mm-hmm. they're hey, give Hubbard. He's been productive, so I'm with you. And, and I, 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 I'm starting him in fantasy leagues, absolutely for sure. Um, even though it's you know a little bit. Well, he's not going to be threatened by the ghost of Miles Sanders, so you I, have to take truth, that into account. <laughs> truth. Truth. Uh, Jim, you mentioned uh, the the rushing and receiving. I know you got to play in this one for the Bills and Texans, right? Yeah, I I like James Cook. I really like James Cook in this situation. The injury to Shakir, I think, makes this even better. Eighty three and a half. Uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. Uh, what he and when he's gone over this, but I've actually I think I've hit the over on his rushing and receiving twice this season so far. Allen needs somebody. <laughs> Anybody. And that Somebody. person, that safety net is yeah. James Cook. It's not Dalton Kincaid. It's not Coleman. Yes, those guys are going to get their targets, but Cook is getting the lion's share of the carries. He's getting the looks in the receiving game. Um, the only time that we've seen 
uh, where is our guy here? Uh, well, they're not giving uh, f- the two backups for um, Buffalo. Oh, well, Ray Davis. And Davis and, and uh, Johnson. Nothing. Nothing. They're getting something here or there, but it's garbage time. It's James Cook or bust. Uh, again, we could see a – we've seen him do it before. Take a receiving play for 30 yards. I'd much rather this than his rushing total because I think he's going to be a weapon in the passing game. And Houston has allowed – over 100 yards rushing, I believe, twice this season. And they've allowed, I believe, two backs to go over 30 yards receiving. So that crushes this number of 83 and a half. Yeah, I just looked it up. James Cook's gone over in the first three games of the season. Obviously, game script was worthless against Baltimore, but what a nice bounce back um, mm-hmm. spot for him to get really involved. Uh, Dolphins and the Patriots. Oh, sorry. Before we jump, I've got one more play uh, yeah. quickly. Stroud over nine and a half rushing. I like that. I almost like that the Bills offense could be a bit issue have some issues. I think that means they're going to have to play really good defense. They're sixth best versus the pass and not so versus the run. I think there could be quite a few plays where he's got no one down there. He needs to create situations. Uh, I looked at his totals through four games, uh, 17, 12, minus one and 13 uh, Mm. has some interest for me. So I quite like that play. I, I, I had thought about Cam Akers. The Bills give up 5.7 yards per carry. That's worse. But, you know, a lot of that came from last week. So I was looking at Cam Akers over 48 and a half. But I don't know what the game script is going to be. You got a really pissed off Buffalo Bills team. You got mm-hmm. a Texans team that the strength is their passing game. So um, I'll probably play it safe. As much as I would like to fade the Bills rush defense, probably stay away. Dolphins and Patriots. Pretty interesting that there's no Ramondre Stevenson yeah. uh, line here after the after the coach came out. I, and listen, it, like, four fumbles, like fumble a fumble every game. That can't happen in the NFL. So um, I don't know. Devon eight forty eight and a half. I feel like if he's hundred percent healthy, he's going to get a million touches. Corbin, anything you can do with this? Not for me. I think it's just it's such an ugly game. Who knows what's really going to happen? It's it's All right. just a pass. Uh, Jim, you like either, any of these no. rushing? All right. Nope. Cardinals and 49ers. Jordan Mason, 86 and a half. Um, love it. <laughs> I'm not taking the under. <laughs> I love it. I'm Cardinals taking... defense is horrible. <laughs> it's atrocious. Yeah. And these teams have put up into the 30s and high 20s both times they played last year. Both of them. I see points. I also like this, but I will just touch on. We're mentioning we were worried about Chuba Hubbard getting tired. Uh, are we not slightly concerned at some point that Mason might start running out of gas? Like first season, like three games, a hundred plus rushing. Like it's a lot of workload for a brand new, for a new kid, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on the table, man. I, 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 again, I don't think this is the week that he starts to slow down. I mean, the Cardinals are the twenty seventh first of the run. They're they're not going to stop him, but. It might be one to watch going forward if he's eventually gonna start slowing down. So it's a good point. Um, I think even more it might might lean more towards why we like Purdy over one and a half touchdown passes. So how do we feel about Debo? I fourteen I, and a half. I I don't know how I don't know what his health level is. That's that's a problem with I have a lot of these skill position guys. Is I I I don't know you you. You have you, you, they have these injuries where it's like oh he's going to be out two to three weeks and he's playing the next week and it's yeah. like is he going to be just a decoy? Is it you know decoy Samuel? I mean he had exactly fourteen last week. He had minus ten the game before that. How many how many rushing attempts is he having in these games, Andy? Is it just like Only one two. or two? Yeah, I mean Again. the first week he had eight, but that was yeah. you know when we that was healthy. Know, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So two each. I. I he might be another guy. Like, why are we giving Debo Samuel carries against the Cardinals? So, um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm staying away from from Debo. These guys that are banged up, I just don't know how to. I never know what to what to believe with them. So, um, oh God, the Raiders and the Broncos. I cannot believe Alexander Madison is back in our lives. I thought he was done. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna go with Brock Bowers under half a yard at minus seven fifty is my best bet. <laughs> Explain uh, that prop to me. I Somebody, I saw this it's earlier. It's so today. weird. It I almost want to take the over because I do. <laughs> at plus four fifty. Like, what do they know? What do they know? You want a little Kelsey sneak down at the goal line or something with the tight end? <laughs> I mean. Um, 
Uh, Javante Williams would be the way that I would look at. Bo Nix ab- was absolutely terrible last week. So what's what's the best way to give your young quarterback a little bit of a break against a absolutely horrific Raiders team? Uh, run the ball. So Javante over 52 and a half is the only thing I like there. Corbin? <sighs> no opinions, <laughs> quite honestly. It's probably the best way to do it. Uh, Giants and Seahawks. Man, I really want to take Kenneth Walker. 72 and a half. And I want to take Charbonnet, 17 and a half. I, this just screams Seahawks hold the ball for 38 minutes and just run the ball. Maybe you look at attempts. Um, the reason I kind of like Charbonnet is, you know, Walker had, you know, the three touchdowns, but this gets out of hand, which I think it very well could be. I'm not really sold that the Giants are going to be able to move the ball against the banged up. Seattle defense anyway. They get up a couple scores. I think Charbonnet gets gets the work in the fourth quarter because Walker has been dealing with the injury. So um, everybody else, I can't really – I can't trust uh, anything with it. Uh, Jim, you like any any of these rushing props? Gino. Ten Nine yards. and a half? Yep, 10 okay. yards. Five for 38 last week in a track meet. Now, the reason why we had five is because Aiden Hutchinson set a personal best, or I think it was a league – NFL record so far this season or led the season in quarterback pressures. These defensive ends for the New York Giants get upfield. They get upfield. That's their job is to funnel towards Dexter Lawrence in the middle. So I think they're going to get upfield and it's just going to lend to Geno getting out of the pocket once or twice. That 10 yards seems low to me. And we could get this in the first half and then be sitting pretty till the end of the game. Um, I think it could come early. I do worry about the blowout. You know, if they're just going to pound the rock with Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet, like you're saying later on. But I think before that happens, we might get, you know, a 15 yard scramble from Gino, 12 yard scramble. Corbin, you like any of these? I was kind of thinking about Daniel Jones. Like, I was like, who's going to, like, I don't see who's going to run the ball for the Giants particularly successfully. He's fighting for his job, he's fighting for his life. He's going to have to do something. And normally, like he's not that bad at running the ball. He could easily take off and go for a 15, 20 yard run in just one scoop. I, I'm I'm not gonna play it, but it does have some kind of interest to me. So if you're Daniel Jones, do you really want to fight for your job on this team that's completely thrown you under the bus, giving you nothing? Paying just a lot of money. Absolutely shit on you on the hard knocks. Like yep. I mean, just like has there been a team that's given their quarterback a If he wants to play like, next year for someone, then probably. Yeah, he, I mean, listen. Have you seen how bad some of these backups are? He's going to have plenty of job opportunities I, I know, but I'm, I, I'm just wondering why, if you're Daniel Jones, why would you really try and take on that yeah, linebacker <laughs> 10 yards down field? Well, you remember the first game we were saying how we thought Dayball was just trying to get him killed? He yes. ran him on quarterback reads like eight yeah. times in the yes. first game off an ACL surgery. Yeah. That tells you what you, they really think about him. They're like, yeah. Yeah, run. Yeah, run. Awful. <laughs> Uh, Packers and Rams, Corbin, Josh Jacobs, Kyron Williams, have your interest? I was just looking up Josh Jacobs, and his totals are kind of all over the place, so I, I can't go with him. Again, Kyron Williams, I mention it every week. We still cannot defend the run, but it's one of those I'm worried that we could – I feel like we're going to have such an easy day that they might – like they're not going to need to run it with Kyron because they'll be so far behind. If there was a line on somehow like first quarter or first half rushing, then – you could tempt me. I, I can't get there on a full game kind of total like that. So is there a rushing and receiving playable for Kyron? Uh, yes, there sure. will be. Um, so Kyron's 104 and a half. Jeez. I mean, if he goes over 83, I think he goes over a hundred rushing. I, I'd rather just buy the receiving yards and take mm. the hundred. If he's going to, okay. there's nobody else on that team, but him. That yeah. but I see the consistency. I just I'm not really familiar. I haven't looked to see how the Packers are against receiving uh, running back. Um, I, I listen. I, I I really like Josh Jacobs over 68 and a half. This is a Rams team gives up five yards a carry. Um, I think it's a Josh Jacobs game. I mean, Corbett, if Jordan loves. Knee is still yeah. not a hundred percent. What a great way to get a lead and just run Jacobs. I mean, that's what you brought him in there for. So. I like Jacobs here. Cowboys and the Steelers. I actually kind of like Rico Dottle on his attempts, over 10 and a half attempts. Zeke's worthless at this point. He's getting nothing done. Dottle finally had 11 carries last week. Um, 
without Brandon Cooks, I th- like the Cowboys are going to have to try and get something good. They're the single worst rush offense in the league. So I'm not taking Dowdle over his yards against Pittsburgh, but I think they're going to try and run it. And you gotta you got to give Dowdle more carries. You can't just send Zeke head down <laughs> – into the into the line for one. Oh, and they, half will. Yards. <laughs> they will. They will. You're right. They probably will. But um, yeah, the, uh, Dowdle on the rush attempts would be the only thing. Corbin, do you like any of these? I was gonna go Dowdle under his yards. Yeah. I I don't I don't see where he gets to this total. The Steelers have such a good rush defense. I think they're like first or second, aren't they? Against the run, three point ha- seven yards per carry. Per second, <laughs> yeah. He, he's had forty six, thirty two, thirty, and twenty six. Zeke's practice all week. I was worried that he wasn't going to play. And I'm like, they're just going to keep trotting Zeke out there for his one or two yard carries and thinking that he's doing enough. Like, they don't trust Dowdle. It's clear, or they would have done it by now. I don't know what they're waiting for. And this total is too high. I don't. It's under. Right. Sadly, you're right. You're right. You think Deuce Vaughn is just sitting on the depth chart? Like, what about me, guys? Can I get a shot? You really I'm here. Got these two I'm here. Old guys. He's collecting a nice little paycheck. Uh, I think he's probably fine. He's probably seen the lack of lanes opening for the for the other running backs. He's like, I'm good. I'm I like good. the CD Lamb four and a half. Reason being, he took five snaps from the backfield last week. They're putting him in the back. He actually took a direct handoff. For I think seven, eight yards. Now I know it was against a different defense, but if they're going to give him the looks in the backfield and they're going to struggle running with the other two guys, you have to think he's going to get three attempts from the backfield a game, whether yeah. it's receiving or not. Just an interesting null number. I feel like every game we see that reverse with that jet sweep run with him. That's an interesting number. I quite like that, Jim. Yeah, that's a good look. Uh, receiving props here. Uh, receiving in the, uh, the the Europe game. Corbin, you like any of these guys? I do. I have two reception props. I really like, I think Mike Williams over two and a half might be one of my favorite ones on the board. They're getting him more yes. and more involved every week. As he learns the offense, he's getting more and more used to it. The Vikings rush defense is okay, but not so good against the pass. He had four last week, three the week before. I think this might be one of my favorite plays on the board. So. Nice, nice. I'm with and you, then I, I'm 100% with you on this. I also have a Lazard. I think he's also at two and a half. Again, yeah. he he just has Rogers' trust. He could he could get that on like two free drives, quite honestly. Once Rogers has his guy, he just fires to him. Uh, he's had five, three, two, and six. So he's only gone under in one game. So, yeah, I quite like both those reception props. Uh, Jim, you like any reception props in this one? Well, I can tell you this. I'm not playing Garrett Wilson anything. Uh, he's getting bracket coverage constantly. And the, what Corbin said, I love the Mike Williams one as well. They need somebody opposite Garrett Wilson that can put some kind of fear in a defense because they don't have it. Uh, Devontae I Adams? To make, <laughs> yeah. There's a certain gentleman that I was hoping might be flying to London this week, but he's not. We'll see. Um I just don't uh, – they, they have to get somebody else to threaten, and Mike Williams is that guy. Uh, three targets, I think that's great. I think I don't even want to worry about the yards. It is Mike Williams. If he is going to get three targets, you have to think that he sails over this 32 just because of the routes that he runs. Uh, but that's the only way I can play it. You can't take anything on Garrett Wilson until they show you that they can be on the same page for a game. Because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, Colts and the Jaguars. You got to wait for the Colts. But uh, the second we get notice that Flacco is playing, I'm going Pittman over. Um, yes, a, a big time. Uh, any other Jaguars you like in this one, Corbin? I kind of like Kirk. I'm I, okay. So I was kind of saying that I kind of like Trevor Lawrence, but I don't trust him. So I was like, if he's throwing the ball, it's only really going to be Kirk or maybe Gabe Davis, and I'm like. Both of their totals are so low that that's half the reason I talked myself off Trevor Lawrence because their totals get nowhere near what his was. But um, he's, he's got to be the main threat. There's no receptions line yet, but I was kind of more interested in that. He had uh, 12 targets, 7 receptions, 61 yards last week, so went over that total uh, versus the Texans. Week before, he had 10 targets, 8 receptions, and 79 yards against the Bills. The Colts are, I, I've already said it, but they are awful versus the pass. They even made Caleb Williams look really good. I've said it already. It, 
like I think they're gonna have to pass the ball. I think they're gonna have to try and get Trevor Lawrence in some kind of rhythm at some point this season. This just feels like the the perfect spot, and Kirk is the Kirk is the guy that he's gonna have to go to. I think so. Ravens and Bengals. Uh, uh, Mark Andrews under twenty four and a half. Like he got he got dropped in one of my fantasy leagues, and no one went to pick him mm-hmm. up. <laughs> Like wow. they're just not throwing the ball to him um, at all. Uh, there's so many guys in there. I can't really pick one. I, this game's a pass for me. Jim, you like any receiving props? I'll go back to Justice Hill again. Yeah. They're, they're not throwing a bunch of passes to Derrick Henry. If it's going to go anywhere, it's going to go to Justice Hill. And we've seen this uh, Bengals defense just be horrible. Could we see a screen pass go for 60? Of course we could. It's the Bengals. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> so that could be hit in one play. That's all it's going to take is Logan Wilson to miss one tackle. Corbin? No. All right. I think I, I, I expect, I, I actually think Burroughs could have some success. I just, I can't, look how many names are on the list. I know. Like, oh, I can't, other than Jamal Chase, but like, who else, like, one week he trust Gasicki and suddenly he got a bunch of targets and then the next week it's someone else and then it's just like the injury to Burroughs, it's just kinda of like, you know what, yeah. just move on. Save yourself a headache. Browns and commanders again. Just, I, just carry on. Just carry, carry, wait, carry pick on. me. Pick me. Pick me. Go oh, ahead, oh, Tag him in. Tag him in. <laughs> Who do you like? Luke McCaffrey. He's getting looks in this offense. He is. I know. Okay. It's a low number, 19 and a half, but he's getting looks. And if Washington is going to be up, I, I don't see them like, you know, pounding the rock against the Browns. Um, well, I think Brian it's Robinson be... doesn't look like he's going to play. So yeah. He's, he's... So, I mean, where's those little five yard, uh, you know, ball control <laughs> offense going to come from? We've seen Luke McCaffrey catch. He's the guy running these five yard outs. And getting upfield, so I would be interested in Luke McCaffrey starting to get involved in this offense a little <laughs> the, bit more week by week. They're two rookies, you know. They they got drafted together. You could tell that Daniels has uh, built a rapport with him. I mean, he's got more of a rapport with him than he does Terry McLaurin. Talking yeah. about a waste of one of the best receivers in the league. I mean, Terry should be putting up a hundred yards a game. So I like the low number on McCaffrey. All right, over under the rest of the season, Corbin. More fantasy points. Luke McCaffrey or Christian McCaffrey? Ooh. Oh, Christian McCaffrey. I'm going Luke McCaffrey. I don't think Christian plays. What, at all? Dude. He started out with a mm-hmm. with a strained calf, and now he's got double Achilles tendonitis. He's flying back and forth from Germany. Mm-hmm. I've seen I, this script. I've I'll seen think... this script a million times. I wouldn't I, I didn't draft McCaffrey in any league. I did. That I that I had. I, I the second you see calf injury in the preseason, calf run for the Achilles. hills. Look at Rogers. I, I, you should just, know this, Corbin. It, it's I, know, but, I, one. I think we could easily see him in like like ten weeks from now, like for the last few down the stretch. I think. <laughs> and I Luke know. McCaffrey will have more points. Than him. <laughs> I, let's keep track of this throughout the season. We should okay, do the McCaffrey all right. watch. All right, all right? This is the, we're doing the, the Luke fun. McCaffrey watch. McCaffrey. Who will have more <laughs> fantasy points this season, Christian McCaffrey or Luke McCaffrey? I, I just, I just, uh, whenever I see calf and Achilles and it's not getting better, it's just like this is a long term injury. Double Achilles tendonitis. Oh my god. All right, uh, Panthers and the Bears <laughs> receiving again. All of the, all of these. Look at all these. Too many. Yeah. yeah, it's too many. I can't pick one of them. Uh, I want nothing to do with the receiving props in this game, Jim. Mm, I'd be looking at Chuba, but that's it. Corbin, uh, not no. a strong feel. No, no, no. no. Uh, Bills and Texans. Uh, Corbin, you like any of these guys? Again, not really. I kind of. I'm still not sure what the Bills are going to do. Texans, for me, it's Nico Collins. If you've got to pick anyone it's the, on the Texans, it's Nico Collins. He's been reliable every single week. Yeah, but then the Bills are so good against the pass, it's kind of like, mm, no, I'm just yeah. going to pass, quite honestly. Stefan Diggs' re- revenge game. Yeah, I was, I was I don't know if it's in the touchdowns. I don't know if it's in the yards. But it is in that game plan a thousand percent that they want to get Stefan Diggs the ball. I would go touchdown. I I, I would go with the touchdown. Thing. That's I wonder if probably the better way. 
Uh, here we go, guys. <laughs> Dolphins and Patriots. All right, I mean, how low are these numbers? That's what I mean, Tyreek at 46 and a half. I'm not taking it over. I, 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 <laughs> None of us can take any of these with any kind of confidence. It's no, it's, 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 there's just no way. That. Yeah. All right, we just, move on. Yeah. Cardinals and the 49ers. Um, I feel like Marvin Harrison Jr., you can just take unders every game. And, like, you'll probably hit, like, 60% of the time. The time that you go over, he's going to have a million yards. But the time he goes under, he's going to – I can't I can't get there this week just because I feel like they could be down and they 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 throw to him quite a bit in the second half. But um, uh, it's just, again, a lot. I would take actually under on Jordan Mason, 10.5. You talked about, like, why would you put more wear and tear on Jordan Mason? I'm not sure he – would fit into the passing game. Of course, one dump off. And he yeah. goes over to Corbin. Uh, no. I, I, I like Jawan Jennings, but there's no number for him at the minute. Really but, surprised on that one. Yeah, that makes me kind of a bit suspicious, but no, no. That's, the, that's the only thing I like to play on the 49ers offense, really, at the minute, and Mason's rushing. I was going to ask uh, Jim, are we doing Are we doing U-Shake this week? or? Oh, we'll get to Kyle. We'll get to Kyle. Uh, oh, Okay. <laughs> That means I know what section it's coming up in. I got I got some notes for that one. <laughs> oh, just some uh, notes. Okay. Uh, Raiders and Broncos. Uh, Corbin, you talked about uh, Minshew under. I was looking at Jacoby Myers under 41 and a half because I, I would think he would get the Patrick Sertan treatment. That being said, I think your, I think your play is better than mine. 188 under. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because one of these guys probably goes over, but not really sure who. Um and yeah, it's probably just going to be a nightmare. So um, we say uh, we 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 do the maths right, but his t- what was his total? One hundred eighty-eight or something. One hundred eighty-eight. Yeah. So you got do, do the maths. Forty-five. Like, Forty. Yeah. Forty-one. <laughs> Let's just say <laughs> both forty-five. So that's ninety. That's a hundred. Do you, do you just play all three? No, you, you just take Minshew under. Just take Minshew under. <laughs> just take Minshew under. <laughs> but then, yeah, you add all those total. That's what one hundred twenty-five. Where are we going to find another? <laughs> 65 <laughs> yards against this defense and that's including all three of those names going over it's just yeah. I, I don't i don't see it i don't see how I'm i think it's, this... i think it's brock bowers okay reason being michael, Ma- michael mayer's out no 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 over. but michael mayer's out so yeah. they have to run bowers as a traditional tight end unless no, they bring it. up some guy from the practice squad you know that used to be a left tackle and he's going to play tight end so with Michael Mayer out, I don't know if they're going to be able to split out Bowers. Now the question is, does that take Sertan off of him and put him on Myers? Probably, Just a thought. Probably. Just take Minshew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Giants and the Seahawks. Uh, I feel like Wandale Robinson and his receptions is going to be a really, really popular play. What is his receptions? Is it five and a half, six and a half? Eight. I bet you. Six and a half. Wow, okay. That seems a uh, Makes sense. He could have eight catches for 31 yards. I could totally mm-hmm. see that. Um, Corbin, you like any receiving props in this game? No, no. Jim? Well, I still believe this giant secondary is garbage, but I don't think that they're going to be tested. It's It could end up being just the Seattle Kenneth Walker show. Yeah. So yeah. I can't, you know, yeah. Do I think Metcalf could torture him? Yeah. Um, Tyler Lockett's been on kind of quiet this year and i don't know if it's fall off or what uh what's tyler's line at See, 30, it's 30, so low now you can't take an under on it and you don't know what kind of work he's gonna get so yeah nothing for me to to officially play here seattle's such a tough team to figure out receiving if you like him to throw the ball a lot you just got to take gino and not pick a wide receiver uh packers and rams corbin i'm interested in your your uh, thoughts on this one yeah, quite honestly, I'm just going to start. I feel like every number is perfectly in the right place, which is very frustrating because I look at it and I was like, Tucker Craft, like he is going to get so much work. But I think I think his reset. I like their receptions more than their yards. I think his Craft's receptions are at three and a half, if I remember. Well, I guess we'll see in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, craft is three and a half, correct? It's kind of annoying. It's like I like all of those. Like Reed's gonna get the ball, but they've kind of, they've kind of put all the lines in just the right place. So, my best advice would be to go with alts. I I love the alts on this week. I like Craft to have just two receptions, mm. Wicks to have a couple of receptions, Reed. 
three or four receptions, you can get quite a nice same game parlay with some of those guys. So yeah, it's hard to pick just one, I feel, this week. But Kraft is probably the one that I'll mention. So. One of my favorite plays of the week is 2-2 Atwell, over 50 and a half. Um, his first week with Puka and with Cooper Cup, he had no targets, no catches. Uh, next week, four targets, three catches for 48 yards. And then the last couple weeks against San Fran in Chicago, he's had 93 yards and 82 yards. He's a leading receiver on this team. Like, Tyler Johnson's been a big disappointment. Um, Demarcus Robinson hasn't really been doing that much. Um, and I just, the Packers' defense just is really, really vulnerable. Kyron's going to open it up a little bit, and I think Atwell's just going to continue to get peppered with some with some targets here. So, I mean, I think Jair Alexander is uh, questionable he, as well. He's if questionable, I remember, which just unlocks the passing game even more because Eric Stokes on the other side is god awful. <laughs> I'm sorry, he is so bad. So J- Jair did practice Thursday and Friday. I just checked. So. We're going to need him, so. Yeah, I, I still like Tutu. I mean, he went over against the Bears and the 49ers, so uh, I, I do like that one. Cowboys and the Steelers, uh, George Pickens, anyone? Jim? Sign me up. Yeah. Sign me up. It's Justin Fields with his number one receiver. He's going to look to him. If it's not there, he's going to take off. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. That's just him. Uh, how do, how, Jim, how do we move- – how, I was going to say, how do we how do we bet on the where's the odds on him to look at Pickens and then just run? Like, how how do we specifically well, he, have just those runs? I got to give him credit this year, and you know, good uh, side note also good for Justin Fields to get you know booted out of Chicago for Caleb Williams and be here you know leading a, a top team here. Um, Pat Fryermuth's been a good target for him. Unfortunately, like Corbett's been saying, I think the line's right. I think it's right where it needs to be. So I think the Pickens line is low. And the thing with Pickens and with Dallas is Dallas's secondary is interception or bust. They just are. They give up big plays. So you can get this in two targets to Pickens. I mean, would anybody anybody be shocked to see him catch a a 30, 40 yard touchdown over Diggs when Diggs goes for a reception? Interception. I'm going to slightly piggyback off that. What is his longest reception? Uh, oh, good line call, week, Andy. Good yeah, call. Uh, longest reception is. I feel like that, uh, we we said it earlier. I forgot which market, but I feel like the longest reception. I mentioned it quite a right. bit. Okay. It's so Pickens is twenty two yeah. and a half. I quite uh, like that. Friar Muth fifteen and a half. Um, yeah, those are your. Those I like both of those. Yeah, I like I like Pickens. I, I personally I like I like Pickens over the best. Just just over on Pickens. Call it a day. Yeah. Like it, like it. Uh, all right, that is going to do it for receiving props. Once again, if you haven't hit the like button, go ahead and do that. And if you can't leave the hottest take in the world in the comments section, just type the word print. But we do want to hear your best bets. We want to hear some props that are jumping off the page to you. Uh, any any sneaky ones that we haven't mentioned here. We're going to get yeah. into some, uh, some official plays here. Um, shout out to us. We're all eliminated from... Uh, from the survivor, we don't have to worry about survivor. This is what that was, that was the smartest thing I did this year at NFL is not join an actual survivor pool with money. I I, I don't think I'll ever join one ever off. again. It's nope. been great, not having to, not having to worry about it. So, all right, let's start with the uh, alt universe here, Corbin. Um, you uh, t- talk this out. You, you said you liked a lot more uh, the team totals that you're dealing with here. In, uh, yeah, in these islands, I- right. So what are we now? Week five, I quite honestly have not had the most success with player props for whatever reason, just game scripts or like the money lines haven't been particularly paying off with some of these crazy upsets. I know I had uh, the Bengals obviously week one and then the Ravens when they were up like two scores versus the Raiders, like so many of these, there's just a lot of weirdness going on. And the one consistent thing that I've won most weeks are, the team totals and some of the alt spreads, particularly on the teams plus an alt spread, not the like minus where they still need to win. So uh, we are going with the Bears under 31 and a half and the Panthers plus 14 and a half. So the Bears have scored 24, 16, 13 and 24. I think the Panthers defense is a bit underrated. Like they're not the best, but they're not they're not this kind of bad to give up this kind of total. I think the Panthers now with Dalton have some kind of offense. I think Tuba's going to have a good week. 14 and a half is a lot when I don't think 
uh, the bears are going to go north of 25 quite honestly so that's that's the first part that might be my favorite part of all three um then we have the packers plus 10 and to score over 16 and a half i really like the packers team totals this week so uh love obviously came back last week looked horrific in the first half but looked way improved in the second the rams have just so many injuries and they suck on defense so badly i think at worst this is a close game i see no world where the rams win by more than 10 uh, the Packers have scored 29, 30, 16, and 29 this year. The Rams have given up 24 to the Bears, 24 to the 49ers, 41 to the Cardinals, and 26 to the Lions. So that's a nice kind of breathing space, I think, for the uh, for the Packers there. And then uh, the Ravens, over 16 and a half, they've scored 35, 28, 23, and 20. The Bengals have given up. 24 to the Panthers, 38 to the Commanders, 26 to the Chiefs, and 16 week one to the awful Patriots. I think the Ravens saw well into the 20s. So you raffle three of those up for minus 137. Love it. Love it. And I love that you're uh, kind of dialing in on what's been working. Um, yeah. So I agree completely. All right, let's do inside the trenches. Jim, you've isolated two teams to talk about. This is where we talk about the offense and defensive lines. Where the struggles are, um, maybe some spots to fade or support. Let's talk about the Jets and the Bears, and we'll start with the Jets. We'll start with the Jets, my lovely Jets, after that beautiful performance last week against Denver. <laughs> Just take a guess, guys. How many pre-snap penalties did the Jets' offensive line have? Oh, I know this. Uh, throw a number. Yeah. Throw it's a number cool. out there. Five. Four. four. <laughs> ding, ding. Corbin's on the money. Five <laughs> false starts alone. That doesn't include <laughs> illegal formations offsides on top of that let's go to the jets defensive line andy oh, no. how many times were the jets called for being in the neutral zone <laughs> <laughs> last week i don't know two or three two times andy let me ask you andy oh, no. was it two different players or the same guy <laughs> same guy same guy two times can't figure out how to line up look Will McDonald has had a great breakout season. He's up there in sacks. But the undisciplined nature of this Jets defensive line and offensive line. Uh, you guys remember we had that guy, Quinn and Williams? Yeah, oh, where's yeah? he been all year? Mr. Second graded tackle. Jeez, He's been calling him out. <laughs> I'm getting fired up on this one. I was going to come in hot here if we're talking about the Jets. I think it is an absolute sham. Now, as far as the offensive line worries, the Jets lost Morgan Moses, and now they have their rookie uh, playing right tackle. That has to kill some kind of chemistry. Moses is a you know a setter of the line. He sets that right side. It's just not there, guys, and that's where the struggles with Brees Hall is coming from, and also the protection from Rodgers. Not having two bookend veterans, I do expect him to play a little bit better, but we have to – face reality that that line is not the same with a rookie at right tackle. Um, defensively, their pressure has not been there. They're still at with Hassan Reddick. I don't see their pressure being there against Minnesota. I think Minnesota is going to keep them off balance. So, you know, when you're looking at your plays, look to fade the Jets offensive and defensive line in this situation. Moving on to the Bears. I would say there's not a more ridiculed line in the NFL than the Bears. And it started out with just Caleb Williams running for his life. At first, it was, okay, well, Caleb's not making this any easier. I don't think it's just Caleb. I think this offensive line is pretty bad. I really do. I think Caleb's actually gotten better with his mobility. But in this situation, you can't trust the Bears to sit there and just pound the rock. I don't think they're that type of offensive line. The run game behind it, there are open holes, but the running backs are not hitting it. Like Andy had mentioned with DeAndre Swift, it's – you know, we bet him to go over one week. He does nothing. Then he breaks a couple good runs and goes over. So still quell your expectations with the Bears offensive line. I do th think they're playing better, but I think they're going to give up one or two sacks. Defensively, Montez Sweat starting to come alive. Big name signing. I think he's going to get some pressure. He is their bell cow pass rusher. They're finding ways to move him around a little bit more. So look at Montez Sweat to get some pressure on the quarterback this week. All right, uh, you already mentioned him, so let's give out a couple of uh, sack props that we think might be uh, worth talking about. You mentioned him, Montez Sweat. 
Yep, Montez Sweat. He's the number one pass rusher on the team. They brought him in from Washington to transform that defense, and we've seen him start to come alive these past two weeks. So at plus 105 for half a sack, I will take that in a heartbeat. And what do you like about Rashawn Gary here? Oh, I like the matchup that Rashawn Gary has, that's for sure. Uh, He's the best pass rusher. Corbin knows this. Uh, The other guys are Kenny Clark, who's more of a run stopper, and you have old Preston Smith who's not a dominant pass rusher. So if anybody's going to get there for that defense, I think it's going to be Gary going along with Corbin's plays. I think the Packers score a lot. I think the Packers are up and that's going to provide opportunities for Gary in this situation. So you're going to give me plus plus one eighty on a number one pass rusher where I know, I feel that the team is going to be in the lead and be able to set the dogs loose. Give me Gary over half a sack. All I love right. that one. All right. Those are I knew good. you would. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to our best bets for the show. And interestingly, Corbin, you have mentioned both mine and Jim's. I'll oh, go first. Oops, Aaron thanks, Rodgers. Corbin. Aaron Rodgers over three and a half yards rushing. He's mm-hmm. sucking the ball and running. He can't not only did he like get downgraded for being hurt, he's off the injury report completely. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a Minnesota team that can put pressure on the quarterback. I think he can uh evade the rush and uh, he's uh, he's he is throwing the ball away a little bit more, but he's tucking and running the last couple times. The last two games, he's flown over this. We talked about him going under in week one, uh, no yards. Then the next week, uh, he had a kneel down for minus one yard. Um, but the last two weeks, he, he's he's running and he loves I, the attention as well, doesn't he? He just, he loves it when he gets those little runs and he can just stand <laughs> there and just say, "Look at me." I I just I I, I and the other thing was last week he had quite a few, he had he had quite a few rushes. I think he had five, and it was you know rainy, bad weather. I think that's what we're gonna get again. So uh, it just all it takes is really one with this total one play for Minnesota to get pressure on the outside and him to step up and run for eight or nine yards, and then uh, we're gonna be good. So I love Aaron Rodgers. Over this uh, rushing yards, it only takes one play. So, uh, Jim, you're going back to Kyle Yuschek over the, when they raised what was his number in the last couple of weeks? On the- was it like 16 or 17 <laughs> or something? <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, it looks like Jim froze here, so Corbin will go. Too. Oh, I'll go with mine then. So mine's a uh, same game parlay in the Ravens Bengals game. It is uh, Derek Henry 60 plus rushing. It's Zach Moss under 65 and a half. And it's Ravens team total. I think it was at 20 and a half we picked. Um, Well, we'll start with the team total. I've mentioned it earlier. The Ravens uh, have gone over this quite easily. They've scored 35, 28, and 23 the last three weeks. The Bengals have given up this total to the Panthers, Commanders, and Chiefs quite convincingly. The only one that didn't was the Patriots, and we know their offensive struggles. So that's pretty self-explanatory so far. Um, Derek Henry's been crushing it. I like him even at 82 and a half, but this just the 60 plus gives you that little bit of wiggle room. Uh, big. Uh, so he's had 199, 151, and 84 the last three weeks. The Bengals ranked 25th versus the run and only 11th versus the pass. We know the Ravens love to run the ball. It's the easiest path to victory. Henry's going to run it. So that's pretty self-explanatory again. And then uh, Moss under 65 and a half. Uh, I was mentioning to you guys before about his totals, 51, 58, 34, and 44. And like I like him at his normal total again, but that extra couple of yards to get up into the 60s just gives you that wiggle room. If he breaks a big one or the game script doesn't quite go to plan, it's just it, – it gives you that that room, basically. The Ravens have such a good rush defense. I'm expecting them to be ahead, so they're going to be – the Bengals are going to be throwing the ball. It all just kind of sits nicely all together. I think the price is negative 140, it looks like. I can just yep. about see. So, yeah, that's my favorite play. All right, Jim. Kyle Juszczyk, after a couple of insane weeks where the total is near 20 yards, uh, <laughs> reel it back in, and uh, you like him to go over his receiving once again. Well, well first thing I want to know, who's cutting off my internet every week when I got to do my best <laughs> Your bet? Your best bet. <laughs> hey, go to Jim's best bet. Oh, okay, here we go. Every week. <laughs> Almost went again. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> no, listen. Get it out quick, Jim. <laughs> right? This Juszczyk line got so out of control 
it was laughable. And I regret so much not taking the unders. They had him up to 26 and a half yards receiving <laughs> at one point, which is lunacy. Jesus. Absolute lunacy. The following week, they only dropped, he had what? I think one reception for 12 yards. They drop it down to 19 and a half. That's, <laughs> that's it. And I didn't play the under. Well, now we're back to reality. We're back to one reception. Kyle Juszczyk in the past two games against Arizona has seen five total targets, five total targets. Keep in mind, we don't need him to light the world on fire. He's gone so far this season, seven receptions for 77 yards. That equates to well over 8.5 yards per carry. So now that this is playable again, I'm back on it. If it's under 10 yards, this line is playable. But to see everybody betting 26 and a half when Kittle and Debo was out was just, it's laughable. <laughs> laughable at that point so now it's playable we'll go back to over liable number 44 love it love it uh corbin same game parlay use check over eight and a half yards receiving aaron Rodgers over three and a half yards rushing those are our best bets thanks for joining us guys don't forget to check out all of our best plays over at wagertalk.com all of our nfl plays will be up if you're watching this on saturday our ufc 307 plays are up um, don't forget to hit the like button, leave us a comment in the comment section and don't forget to type the word print. If you can't come up with a hot take or a best bet, appreciate all of you. Let's practice good bankroll management. Don't go all in on certain plays. Let's just try and, uh, try and pick off some units here or there and end up with a profitable week. Good luck on your plays. We'll see everyone later. Good luck. See you guys later.